I'm Yain Andrews. My talk here is a very take action heavy topic, and my topic is get what you deserve. Firstly, I want to ask a question. Who are you investing? Please raise your hands. Okay. Now, if I said everyone's hand should be up, because, sorry, it's a trick question. <laughs> For term investing, everyone instantly defaults the term to money. But in reality, investing is trading something for something else. We all trade time with family members for relationships, um, investment when it comes to healthy eating, exercise, simply even meditation. Meditation has 12 scientifically known benefits for your body and mental health. So what are you with? This isn't a trick question, so please just think for a moment, what are you with? Are you worth working in the factory? Seven pound eighty three an hour. Are you worth working at the call center for approximately eight pound an hour with the potential to have verbal abuse from an angry customer? We all love the mantra, love thy neighbor, but we don't really love ourselves because when we think about that scenario and we reflect on ourselves, we, it's not really a desired sort of position to be in. Because for me, I'm worried. I've been in bad debt. Before researching this topic, I didn't even know the difference between good debt and bad debt. I'm worried for when I become a father, I won't be able to teach my kids financial independence because it's not a topic in the school criteria. We learn money from our parents and they learn money from their parents. And that sort of mentality is passed on and we don't learn anything new. Money has changed, but we don't change. I like to talk about, I like to talk about my poker coach. Ben CB. Before he became successful at poker, he traded years of his time to study poker, the statistics, and how to perform at a high level. For about five years, he spent his life studying, applying, but now he crushes at high level, high buy-ins. It wins a lot of money. Before coming to this TEDx event, I actually spoke to him, um, a multimillionaire, and he was happy to speak to me. Just an average guy from South Wales. His favorite saying is, say no to naysayers, because if you have a dream, if you have a vision, just do it, because if you listen to other people, you will be in the same situation as them. Here are some of my inspirations. Dan Locke, he titles himself the king of high ticket sales. His story is that he grew up without a father. He worked on a lot of different startups and they all failed. This man was $150,000 in debt before he made his successful business. But the difference between him and majority of us is when we fail, we stop. Instead of learning from the failures and applying them to the next obstacle, because one way or another, life's a mountain, we, we just got to keep climbing. Samuel Leeds, he, start, he bought his first property at the age of 18. He was financially independent by the age of 21. He teaches people the downfalls and how to be successful when it comes to property investment. He's a great guy and you can speak to him and his main mantra when it comes to the general um, population is networking is everything. If you network and you speak to 50 people, they might know another 50 people and the multiplication just keeps applying. Christo. He is a graphic designer. He grew up poor, he started a business, and he doesn't care about money. He teaches people how to 
create the product, and instead of charging about 50, 100 pound, he teaches them how to charge more and reestablishes the value that you are worth more. Here are some quotes from very successful, su successful people. Phil Knight, co-founder of Nike. He doesn't believe in advertisement because when you create a brand, the brand is projected. We all know the Nike symbol and we all relate trust to it. Henry Ford, whether you think or you can or can't, you're right. Where you are in life is an interpretation of how you see failure. Whether you see failure as a pure defeat or you see failure as achieving the next mile. Steve Jobs, innovation distinguishes between the leader and the follower. We all love to be someone. With the era of social media, we all want to be someone. And that's OK. It's, it's really OK. But whether you think you can or can't, that's, it reestablishes that you've got to keep going. You've got to achieve what you want to do. I like to talk about Dan Pina. Before you research this guy, uh, warning strong language. He is the guy that is worth 50 billion US dollars. Everything he says, he says with strong language. Um, however, he says quotes like, um, if 20 years ago you'd just done it, 15 years ago you just done it, 10 years ago you'd just done it, we wouldn't be in the mess we are in today. And he goes on to say, his favorite quote is, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Because how are we going to develop if we are taking advice from a people that are in exactly the same situation as us when we want to go higher? Will Smith, he openly um, said that he'd make his kids read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kawasaki. The rich people in the world all understand the importance of financial education from a young age, but we don't. Like again, it's not a topic in schools, and we don't talk about money because money has become a taboo topic in society. Times changed, and we haven't changed. The schooling system is exactly the same as it was during the Industrial Revolution, where we were training people to be workers, to accommodate for the change of times. Now that we are out of that mentality, we, have, we still haven't changed. So what can we do? We can completely eradicate all sorts of thought processes when it comes to, oh, yeah, um, I'm going to work for 40 hours a week, 40 years of my life, and live for retirement. When we're old, when we might not be able to travel, when we might have health problems, and we will be in a situation where we've got this money in our pension, but we can't go to Egypt to see the pyramids. We can't maybe go to Paris to see the Eiffel Tower. So the whole mentality is, is that it's okay to be someone else. It's okay to develop yourself. But as long as you have a vision of where you want to be in 20, 30, 40 years, have that idea, write it down, then reverse engineer it. Say, okay, I want to be here. How do I get there? And then how do I get there? Soon you will find you'll have milestones and you'll have obstacles. But if you fail, try again. Okay. I'll conclude this talk in three sentences. Number one, no one to quit. Completely contradicting what I said. However, no one to quit, I basically mean done is better than perfect. We all want a perfect relationship. Sometimes it might not work out, and we can't keep engineering something that isn't going to work. But Know when to quit and when to keep going is 
two topics that run parallel to each other. But talking about to Ben CB, he always says, champions stand up one more time. And it's true. Because at the end of the day, we're all human. We all love routine. We don't like disturbing the routine. But when we disturb the routine and we do something uncomfortable or something that scares us once, it makes us feel alive. And number three is just breathe. <laughs> we aren't promised day to day. We are here to reproduce. We are here to learn. We are here to love each other. But we are here, and we don't know how to parent. <laughs> no one teaches us to parent until we are actually parents. And we have to learn it for ourselves. So the whole point of this talk is just get what you deserve. Are you still worth the monotony of working a job you don't like? Are you still worth a manager that doesn't respect you? Are you worth the life you have right now, or do you want something else? If you want the life that you don't have, Envision it, reverse engineer it. And I hope you all learned that today. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs>